The NFL draft is over, but Dave Gelman's work is still not complete. While there is talk about current free agents that are still on the market, let's look at the free agents that the Giants have signed, the undrafted free agents. Now, this is the rare period where you could potentially find a diamond in the rough that was overlooked in the draft. So how did Dave Gelman do in the undrafted period? Here are my top five New York Giants undrafted free agent signings. At number five, Kyle Markway out of South Carolina. Now, his career was hampered early by injuries, but he ended up finishing with 31 catches in his senior year. Not an overly athletic tight end, but he is very good in the short intermediate passing game, especially on the out and curl routes. Really, this is a position where the Giants have struggled with depth, and I do like this kid to potentially make the roster. Now, a little bit of a background for this list. I'm looking for guys that can probably make the roster, that have a good shot, and really, when you look at the depth chart for the Giants, Markway can fit in as that third tight end. He's got the route tree, especially on the out routes, the crossing patterns, and on some of the hook patterns that I think you can really use for a backup tight end. It's not overly complicated. He does need a lot of work as a run blocker, but really in the tight end game today, you're looking for guys that can catch the football, be that security blanket in the middle of the field. And given Evan Ingram's injury history, you need backups at this position. And it's one of those thin positions that really, they need some backups for. And this list, primarily, I'm looking for guys that can make the roster, that can make the final team. And really, I can see him doing that, being a backup tight end that can fill in, especially as the third or fourth tight end on the depth chart. At number four, I have Dana Levine, the edge rusher from Temple, five and a half sacks last year. Really like this kid. He's a bit of a tweener, six foot four, but more close to the 225 weight. Really fits as that outside edge rusher, but had a lot of experience playing with his hand in the ground at Temple last year. And really is a kid who I can see making this roster as one of those fill and pass rush situations where he can come in off the bench, come in certain sub packages, and rush the passer. And really, they didn't address the pass rush issue primarily in the draft and you look they passed on some decent ones and I really think that was one of the things I would have liked to see the Giants do in the draft was get another pass rusher and I'm not saying he's going to come in and be a every down pass rusher but in certain sub packages he can come off that edge he's athletic and I do think that this can be a kid that can make the roster especially because this was a position that the Giants really didn't address in the draft until very late. At number three, I have John Risen, the wide receiver, the University of British Columbia, in case people are like, wait a minute, where's he from? Look, this kid led his conference in catches and receptions per game. And you look at it, you're going to say, okay, that sounds good. And they're like, oh, wait a minute, it's D2 school. What's so impressed about that? The kid's six foot seven. If you watch his tape, it's basically him outboxing every defender and going up. It's like watching him play basketball, basically. And Really, the reason I can see him making this roster is you don't find six foot seven wide receivers that can jump. And you could even make the case he could be one of those hybrid tight ends. He might not be a wide receiver in the NFL with his size. He could even be a tight end. He could fit multiple roles in this offense. And really, when you're looking for a great red zone target, what's better than a guy that's six seven going up for the ball? I mean, we've seen dominant tight ends like Rob Gronkowski who can go up and just grab it just because he's so much bigger than defenders. And when you look at Ryzen, this is such a big kid. We don't see wide receivers that six foot seven. And I mean, I say wide receiver because that's what he played in college. He can maybe move to tight end, be one of those hybrids. But either way, you don't find many special players like this in terms of their size and difference and really when you're looking at undrafted or late round picks you're looking for guys that stand out you're looking for guys that are different and Ryzen is truly different a guy that can go up get the ball big six foot seven kid and really a prospect that I'm really excited to see what he does in training camp at number two Ben Victor the wide receiver out of Ohio State He's a burner. He can stretch the field, long arms. He's got great wingspan. I mean, he had six touchdowns last year and averaged 16.4 yards per catch. That is a big game wide receiver, and I had him rated as a fifth round pick, and the Giants got him in undrafted free agents. Great value that they were able to get here. And really, I understand they have a lot of great depth at wide receiver, but the Giants are also known for finding these diamonds in the rough late in the draft, finding these guys that were undervalued, 
And really, Victor, he was an explosive receiver, got overshadowed in that Buckeye passing game. But still, when you look at the tool set, when you look at what he can bring to the table, what his versatility can do, and the fact that he can make big plays with Daniel Jones as a big arm, this could be a sneaky pick and be a guy that, when we're looking back at this, could be, all right, he's one of those guys in the Giants. They found another diamond in the rough, and we're going to be like, of course, the Giants finding receivers when other people can't. And number one, Kyle Murphy, the offensive lineman out of Rhode Island. I love this kid. I've had him in a lot of my mock drafts. I have him rated as a fourth-round pick in the NFL draft, and he fell all the way out of the draft into the New York Giants. And look, you look, the Giants, they put a lot of capital in this offensive line, and that is great. And when you look at the Giants' offensive line, the starting five, it looks really good. But what do you need? You need depth. And Murphy brings that because he's not only a very good offensive lineman that played a lot in college, but he was versatile. He's played four positions. He's played both guards, both tackle positions, including 13 games at left tackle. He's versatile. Now, you look at his body type and his skill set, probably fits more to that interior offensive line, but still having a guy that can play the tackle positions, that can maybe spell right tackle for a game or two, can play the guard positions inside, I can even see him being a project that becomes an eventual starter on this offensive line. And just think of that. If the Giants can find three offensive linemen that eventually start on their line from one draft period, because they already found two in the draft and now one in undrafted free agency, that's a steal. And I really think Murphy is going to be one of those guys that's going to be a nice role player. Could he maybe be a starter? Yes. But at the very least, I can see him being a very good role player on this Giant team that can play multiple backup positions and really can operate as that six offensive lineman. You can maybe bring him some sub packages, but really when one guy goes down, you have someone that can come in and fill the role and pick up the slack. Thank you so much for joining us here today. Make sure to hit that subscribe button so you don't miss any of our latest content. And until next time, I'm your host, Nolan Rich, and this is Rich Sports Talk.